Mitchell has his head up, takes the oh, oh, Uh, so moving along, we have a take here from John that Amani Bates will be pushing to start by the All-Star break. Jackson, I'll let you start off with this one. John, we we expect better here. Um, <laughs> I know you believe this, but like, do you, John, do you believe this or do you think that this should happen? Because I think that's like, that's an entirely separate conversation. There's a key d- distinction. Right. Like he will not be starting by all-star break so i think we can safely say that just because the Cavs needed anybody on the wing who could shoot and they had jetty osman who was like their tallest you know three-point shooter especially with you know with kevin love being bought out uh and they desperately needed him and it wasn't that jetty osman wasn't pushing to start it's like jetty osman wasn't pushing minutes so and that's just all comes down to, you know, JB not trusting him on the defensive end. So if it's like if JB is not trusting Jetty Osman on the, on the defensive end, I don't think he's going to be trusting like a twenty year old Imani Bates. Nineteen, on the def- I think. Ni- well, will he be nineteen <laughs> during the season, or will he be twenty during the oh, season? Oh, yeah, I'm not sure. Not sure. Right. Either, either big way. difference. <laughs> big, yeah. Either way, it's like I just knowing what JB prioritizes, it's going to be tough for me to see him like it's it's impossible for him to actually be pushing the start. Um, whether he should be starting, I think this is almost as ridiculous, but I can kind of if I squint really hard, I can maybe like maybe see something like, OK, maybe maybe he's everyone better is off injured. the bench. Right. Um, I was going to say, there's a big gap between Summer League basketball and G League basketball. Um, Mm -hmm. So I think while he has the talent, I think there's a lot of things that he doesn't do well that he's going to need to do well to be a starting caliber player, if he ever becomes a starting caliber player. Um, Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be a longer road than people like. I think there's going to be a lot of people who look at charge um box scores and the days he scores 30 32 points on 15 shots people will say Imani Bates should be starting and the days that he scores four points on like 14 shots no one's gonna say anything if he gets if he gets real minutes in a situation that isn't like everyone's injured during the season I'd be I'd be pleasantly surprised hmm I'd have to agree with that. Um, I'm all team positivity when it comes to the Cavs, really just the NBA in general. I want to see the players win. I want to see the underdog stories. I want to see everyone reach their potential. But I do have to pump the brakes here, John. I'm sorry. Uh, I've been as encouraged as I can reasonably be about Amani's performances uh, in the summer league, the way even the offseason highlight videos, just the way he's carried himself. It seems like a guy who is committed to trying to get back on track to that top prospect he once was and trying to find a way to fit in the NBA. Um, I think there's something glimmering under the surface. I don't think there's any doubt that he can shoot the ball, Uh, but I just can't imagine a 19 year old or 20 year old when the season starts with so much room for improvement. uh, I don't see that guy managing to start for a team that I also expect to win 50 or 60 games. Like that's just not something you see with any prospect, let alone the 49th pick in the draft. So I have reasonable measured expectations for Amani. I hope he kills it in the G League. I think it's going to be a roller coaster. I think there's going to be ups and downs. And those are the things that the Cavs can't really afford right now with their current expectations. They can't have a guy trying to figure it out at the NBA level while they're also trying to be one of the top teams in the East. Yeah, and it's just the things that he needs to figure out aren't really issues that you can live with if you're a NBA team that has Donovan Mitchell, mm-hmm. Darius Garland, and Evan Pobley on the court at the same time. So like, I think some of his issues are going to be like ball stopping, not moving off ball, not being in the right spots, especially on the defensive end. Mm-hmm. So it's like those just aren't issues that you can just like live with. And I know that the regular season is like 
not pointless, but like not as high pressure as like the rate as like the playoffs and stuff like that. But you just you still can't live with somebody like that, especially when you got somebody like Struess who theoretically fits perfectly. Yeah, well, let's talk about someone else who theoretically fits perfectly. They, but they don't. <laughs> <laughs> Our next take from Steve Quadgers says that Dean Wade is the most important role player. Jackson, I'm just going to let you slam the door shot on this one. Go ahead. Okay, man. so I wish I kind of knew what Steve was talking about when he said most important. If he meant that, like, he thinks Dean is going to be the best role player, if he thinks he's going to be the most impactful role player, I'm going to say no. If he's saying he's going to be the most important in the sense that like you can plug him in at the four and just know that, Hey, you're constantly getting good minutes. And if you got good minutes from Dean Wade, everything else is going to fall into place. Then I could, I could kind of like nod my head and say, okay, sure. Yeah. Um, But if we're going to talk about like, what to expect from Dean Wade. I just, I just don't think that we could have saw that last season and really hoped for anything with Dean Wade more than like him being serviceable. If somebody goes down in the regular season, like, I think if you're counting on Dean Wade, he's just not, he's just going to let you down because you think that he should be a better three-point shooter and a shoot at a higher volume than he does and he just simply doesn't shoot it that much he has a really low um usage rate like he just doesn't take up a lot of possessions on the court and that's like okay for the ninth or tenth guy 11th guy in in a um, rotation but he's just not somebody that you want to have out there in like a playoff setting when you need everyone to be a factor, especially when you already have guys like Isaac Okoro who can disappear on offense. You know, two of your best players are non shooters. So it's like, you know, I just, I just really can't, really can't see it unless Dean Wade kind of becomes the guy that he was for like that two week stretch in the 2021 season. When, when a Lowry Markkinen was out and it was like, oh, we don't need Lowry Markkinen. We have Lowry Markkinen at home. And, you know, that was that was like a blimp. And I think we can kind of, I think we can just, you know, if Dean Wade gives us something, we can be pleasantly surprised, but I wouldn't count on it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't count on it either. It's hard not to kind of talk yourself into a 6'9 forward who, does have three point range, even though I mean it hasn't really translated. Like he can shoot the ball. I, I think that's fair to say. But the confidence isn't there. I don't even know if that's the issue, but it seems like there's no confidence there. Uh he doesn't move without the ball very well on the three point line. I I don't think he's like a motion shooter, really. Uh like very different players, but for example, Sam Merrill is someone who you can have him run off screens and shoot threes. I don't think Dean Wade has really shown that he'll do that. And some of it just comes down to, again, the confidence. Like, he doesn't play like a gunner. He doesn't play like he's out there to shoot the ball. And you really don't want him out there if he isn't shooting. You don't want him out there if he's going to disappear on offense. He's a solid defender. He's genuinely one of the better wing defenders on the team just from his size alone. I think as a backup uh, small ball four, he could be very useful for this team. But he needs to play with a purpose. He needs to pose a threat to the other team. Otherwise... You know, why are you really putting him out there when you have other players who could eat those minutes instead? So I would love to see Dean Wade return to that little two week stretch that he had. It's just it's really becoming less likely uh, each day. One of like so one of the good things with Dean Wade is if your starting small forward goes down and it's like if like Struis goes down and you said we want to keep we like our bench rotation. We want to keep our rotation as is. You can throw Dean Wade into the starting lineup because you know what you're going to get from Dean Wade. You know he's going to compete on the defensive end. You know he's not going to force things offensively. So you can just keep everything rolling and just plug him in. I think the criticism of Wade comes down to, I don't think the team needs what he provides, at least not like they did two years ago. Yeah, 
And to that point, you would hope that Dean Wade's best minutes will come as that backup four, but the Cavs just got George Neang to play that role, mm -hmm. basically. So I'm sure he'll get opportunities to kind of, you know, try and take that spot, but it's a long shot at this point. Like we saw what these guys could do last year. Let's bring in something new and just, you got to experiment more this regular season, I think. Cavs are going to be a very good team regardless. When you have those opportunities to run out new players and see what you have, you have to take it.